Okay, what I'm going to show you guys how to do is how to create an assembly of the puzzle cube. So if you notice down here at the bottom, I have all six of my pieces pre-drawn out. Um, you may not have all six of your pieces. You may just have one and you're working on designing your second or trying to fit them together as you go. Either way works. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to open an assembly file. So when we go to assembly, um, what we want to do is we want to see our place component up here. Um, you'll notice that there's a drop down menu. So if yours says place from content center, just hit the bottom half of that box and go to simply place. That'll allow you to place something that you've already created. Um, what our file will ultimately look like here is I want it to look like this. Um, so this is what my end product will look like, but it'll be assembled in a solid cube state. But this is what the pieces look like pulled apart. Um, so for my main piece, I'm going to start with my blue piece. That's kind of that front side. Now for your first component, notice I can kind of move this around a little bit here. We need to lock that into place. So one of your, our pieces have to be what's called grounded. So if we right click on this, we go through our drop menu here and we want to select grounded. What that does is it locks it in place. So you'll see that little pin icon. That means it can't move. We've physically eliminated any possibility of movement. The next thing I want to do is I want to bring in one copy of each of my other pieces. Again, if you only did, if you're doing this simply one piece at a time as you go, then just bring in the one piece, the next piece that you created. Um, so as we go through and do this, one of the nice things about this is I can simply use my constraints um, to set this up. So this one, uh, this part will actually go down here and this part will be up in this area. So it's going to actually have to spin. Now, depending on how you see your pieces, you may be able, you can use your constraints and the two main constraints we're going to use is called mate and flush. And you can kind of see the picture of how those work. This is where I grab that surface and that surface and kind of slap them together where this is flush. So it puts both of those edges even to each other. Um, so in this particular case, uh, what I can do is I can come in here and I can say, okay, I'm going to mate this part to this side. So that gives me that simple orientation. Um, now I said I wanted this part at the bottom. So what I can do is I can use my flush constraint and I can say, okay, make this flush with that and you'll see it kind of rotate in my part so I'll click apply and the last thing I need to do and if you don't know where the con what constraints need to be applied simply drag your part around and see where that movement still lies um, so with this one I'm gonna say make this face even with that face and I'm gonna make it flush so now if we try and move our purple piece, you'll see that it's fully constrained. In this 3D world, there are essentially six degrees of freedom. We have movement along the X and the Y and the Z plane, and then we essentially have rotation around our X axis, our Y axis, and our Z axis. So when we're doing very simple mate and flush constraints, we need a minimum of three constraints um, to lock our pieces together. Um, now you can go through and you can apply these uh, simply by placing oops I added oh nope okay now if you notice here I, what I did is this is what tracks all of our constraints so it's saying this is flush to this now when you look at this you'll say man those those don't look like they're even well, you got to keep in mind, we're in a three-dimensional world. So they are actually even, but our perspective sometimes give us the, the illusion that they're not. Um, so it's all a matter of, of where you're looking. Um, but I can go through and I can actually use my flush constraint to fully constrain this object. Now, you may be sitting there and thinking, oh, I just cannot picture how these pieces go together 
um, by just grabbing them from the side. Okay, you don't you don't have to. That's the nice thing about our 3D environment. Um, what we can do is this red piece is going to go up here, and inside that gap is where that part goes. Um, so if I simply select my red piece, I can come up here and click Free Rotate. And what I can do is just rotate it to roughly where we want it to be. Then I can right click, set OK. I can kind of see how it's supposed to fit in there. And then you can go through and you can set up your constraints. So if you really like using the mate constraint, you can select those faces. Make sure you hit apply. We can do the flush constraint. And then same thing here. It looks like it's fully constrained. There's still one missing. So make sure sometimes just cancel out of the constraint area so that way you can go through and just grab your part and see if it's going to come off. Now, if you're designing this one piece at a time, one of the things you'll notice is after we get our sides kind of set up, whether it's one piece, two piece, whatever, you can kind of look at it from our top view here and you can see where these gaps are. So you can design your part to be like, okay, I gotta have something that fills here, 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 and over here, and start drawing your part. And you can even pull dimensions from this. We can go to our inspect tool and we can grab distances. So if I need to know how far in that is or how wide this part is, you can easily grab dimensions from the things that you've already created. So um, utilize these tools. Now, if you've noticed, I've rotated here without clicking on anything. Um, F4 is your free rotate. So when you hold it down, you kind of bring up this orb rotation tool. And then when you let go of it, it goes away. Um, so as we go through this, what I need is my backside. So uh, this part is actually going to go back here and I will go ahead and rotate that part to roughly how it fits. So it's going to go in like that. So if I start out, I'm just going to use my flush constraint. Now, one of those things, keep in mind, you can kind of see we are still in line with those things because I've said make it tight here and make it tight over here. So the last place to allow it to go, it can only move these directions. So I simply need to flush it to this outside edge. So my last piece, it gives me all four sides and what they need to make. So if I go through and rotate my part. The other nice thing about this is that as you go through, say we notice a part that things are overlapping or they're phasing through other objects. Because notice here, I can drag this so it physically goes inside of my cube. So the virtual world is nice because it, it gives you that freedom, but in real life, we can't just phase through an object like this. Um, we have to account for that space. So if you come in here and you start seeing gaps or spaces or things like that, go back to your drawing and look to see where those are at and we can make changes to those. It doesn't mean you have to start drawing from scratch or start over. Um, all we have to do is simply update our drawing and it will update in this three-dimensional world. Um, and I'll, I'll show you an example. This one doesn't have uh, that air, but I'll show you what it looks like and we can create uh, that air for you. So, so you notice here, as I spin my cube around, each one of my pieces kind of line up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak a dimension in this so that way it'll look like there's a gap in here. So if I go to my orange piece, I'm going to go into my extrusion, I'm going to edit my sketch. And this would be the area in which it's off. 
or that I'm going to simulate it being off. So if I say a quarter of an inch, um, and we'll change this one to uh, a half an inch. That way everything's still sized uh, similarly. So we'll click finish. We'll click up uh, the that that's our update icon. It's already updated. I can click save to make sure the change takes effect. Now, if you notice here, it's already moved. It's already updated. Otherwise, this is our update command box. So if you click that, it, if it didn't show up yet, it would then show up. So now we have that space in there. So I'll be like, oh, okay, I made a mistake. Something's off. I go to my drawing. I can simply edit my sketch again and and this error occurred because I was trying to make it wider than I can so this one I'm gonna switch this one to my uh, 375 then switch this one um, just so that way it'll fit because otherwise we might just have to delete another dimension um, to allow us to make those changes and then put it back in so if we go back to our assembly we'll see it is updated it is locked in um, so if you have mistakes that's the nice thing about this program is you can go back and make changes without having to start over you can make tweaks and it tracks all of these uh, if we look in here you'll see all the different constraints and how they're linked together to the different faces.